That's just like Solomon, you grew up watching him. Does that mean people know he's coming? Yeah, he set the example of game one, Landry Shamit. And he only tries certain people now. Before wow. he, he used to try, he'd try and chase down Kawhi. Now he's like, yeah, I just, the little guard. Richard, it's October. You gotta pace yourself. Okay, that's there. <laughs> Who are that you? new graphic, look I, at that. Look at that, look how fancy we've gotten. That's beautiful. You leave for a week or two and look and what happens. things get better. Things get I so, respect that. So much better. Welcome to The Jump. I'm Rachel Nichols. I'm joined by our Lakers reporter, Dave hey. McMenamin. Hey! And the man on the end who's been to four NBA Finals, one NBA ring ceremony, and I was going to make a joke about it. I've been to multiple ring ceremonies, just not mine. Well, there right? you go. Other teams have gotten their rings and I've gotten to watch. <laughs> that's good. They like to have you on hand for that. Yeah, one time they gave him a ring, though, Aww. so that's good. Richard yeah. Jefferson. Thank you guys for being here. Coming up, we're going to talk about Anthony Davis posting that 4-20 game in just three quarters of action last night. Is this the start of an MVP campaign? First, though, Jimmy Butler hasn't been sleeping much this past week. He has a new baby, a little girl, which had been keeping him from his other new baby, the Miami Heat. Originally, none of this was supposed to overlap. The baby was supposed to come during the preseason. But <laughs> babies, even babies born under Pat Riley's rigid watch, do not stick to schedules. And so Jimmy That's found two of the most important ventures of his life starting simultaneously as he missed the first three games of the regular season. By last night, though, both mother and child were home and happy, allowing Butler's career with the Heat to get off to a rollicking official start. Here's a little peek into Jimmy's mindset pregame. Michael, you ready? Hey, can y'all put on a Undertaker theme music as I'm walking out, please? <laughs> Once the ball tipped, Butler wasted no time driving in for the Heat's first bucket and many more. After that, he would score 12 of Miami's first 20 points and then just kept going from there. This cross on Tyron Wallace, not nice. Oh. Not nice. There were also plenty of moments like this. Jimmy voluntarily taking a Cam Reddish elbow to the face to draw the Ooh, call. Not so much right And here. somewhere Alonzo Morning is nodding and smiling. <laughs> I love that. Butler has a reputation for wanting to be a team's alpha, and that's certainly earned. But he is never among the league leaders in usage. He has a track record of leaving room for his teammates to also flourish. And last night, that teammate was Tyler Hero, who broke out with a 19-point second a quarter. great name. Hero was just an absolute marksman. Look at this. Make, make, just make. Yeah, he would finish the night hard. with 29 points, the most scored by a Heat rookie <laughs> since Dwayne Wade did it in 2004. Now, afterward, Hero played that part down. But obviously, if you are hitting any of Wade's records just four games into your rookie season, things are going well for you. There was one damper on last night's game. Trey Young, who had gotten off to Ooh. an absolutely sizzling start this season, left in the second quarter with that ankle sprain you're watching. Now, fortunately, follow-up evaluations this morning found no significant injury. Young didn't even need an MRI, and he is expected back next week. Butler is expected back next game. <laughs> like every parent in the world, his work routine will now be a juggle. He's a baby but Butler. He won't miss any more time and said his new yeah. role as a dad yeah, will give him even it. more purpose. <laughs> I started looking at life different a long time ago, but I definitely look at it way differently now. Um, I feel like every time I leave the house, every time I hop in the car, every time I do anything, it's like, yo, I got to make it home. So um, I look forward to having that feeling for the rest of my life. Butler realizes he's still got a bunch of sleepless nights ahead of him, but as he showed last night, his game is fully awake and ready for a real run in Miami. He's not getting sun out there. He's... <laughs> You're really upset with the hand. I, yeah, I just, it's daughter, like, it's like, son. Uh, got that, look how the jokes are, I just, they have Dave McMenamin's hand in Jimmy Butler's face. It's just, I'm not saying Dave is the most, the humor. It's a, and I'm pointing out the, is it not funny if you point it out? I want to know what you think about, uh, about Jimmy the, Butler's the actual, actual on court, on court action. How do you think he fits in with the heat? I think he fits in great. One, they're looking for an alpha, right? So I think that's great. And the second part about it is that, there are a couple of places that you can go where you have to 
like fit into and know that you're going to fit San Antonio, Miami, Pat Riley, Pop. So when you go there, you know that this is not about me. This is about me coming in and fitting in. And I think Jimmy can relinquish some of the kind of stuff that might have followed him showing up in a place he wanted to be. But I think in terms of the personnel, they're fitting around him, yeah. not the opposite way around. He could have been the third cog with the Lakers potentially, mm -hmm. you know, had they gone down that road. He could have returned to Philadelphia and played part of that system. But he got to be the guy down in Miami, and now they have some younger pieces that are fitting alongside him, clearly as the betas. Even someone who has an alpha personality like Deion Waiters has, you know, we don't, he's basically been out of the picture wait, based wait, on the. Wait, the, wait, the, wait, the wait, where were you going to say? No, I'm just saying it from a standpoint of like, I mean, he's not he, fitting in. But he yes. believed, no, I'm saying, but the, the team problems is doing don't what seem they can. To be, Deion Waiters' issues don't seem to revolve around Jimmy Butler. They seem separate Correct. and dealing with the coaching staff. Deion Waiters is no longer suspended. He was spending some time, even after his one game suspension, he was spending some time away from the team. He has returned to the team as of yesterday. We don't know when he will be back. Thank you for board. that Wikipedia entry and all saying. the correct information. No, I wasn't saying. <laughs> That, I'm just saying my yeah. point is, though, the, the team has made it clear that yes. this is all about Jimmy Butler this year. Mm -hmm. And he is not running with it and being a tyrant with it thus far. It seems like he is trying to find a role that will help everyone else. And, you know, you could say you want about him, but he has the work ethic and he has the, you know, the want to be the guy late in games. He's leading scorer in the fourth quarter last year for the Philadelphia 76ers. When you talk about a group that is still trying to figure out who they are, it's really nice to have that piece in place already. So it's like when the games get tight, we know who the guys are. And if we just have to play hard as Bam Adebayo or Justin Winslow or uh, Tyler Hero for the first three quarters right. and then hand it over to Jimmy, what a great situation to be well, in. And that's the thing that I think they're going to miss in Philly. We're not going to talk about Philly too much, but it's like that last five minutes was Jimmy Butler time. Yes. Right? It was not Tobias Harris time. It was not Ben Simmons time, and it wasn't Joel Embiid time. It was Jimmy Butler time. And so, yes, to be in a place, like you said, where, hey, Jimmy, it's yours. You're not in Minnesota anymore. You're not You're not going to ask to be something in Philly. This is yours. Go, go do it. And for all the, the thorny sides he has to him, when he was in Philly last year when I was covering them in the playoffs, every single post-game press conference, which was a huge part of the playoff experience for guys, he was sitting next to Joel Embiid. And Joel Embiid had a tough playoffs last year, missing some time and dealing with the knee injury and all that stuff and some sickness. And Jimmy was right there to take the heat to be maybe a bodyguard or perhaps a buddy for Embiid. That's leadership. Maybe even and he's a bringing, butler. Oh, he brought it back. He brought it back. Brought it back. Yeah, and and yes. again, there's a reason you're on a sports show and not yes. a comedy show. It's yes. amazing. I was backing up your point about Deion Waiter saying it was not a Jimmy issue. It was a totally Got separate it. issue. And, and look, to your point about the team fitting into team culture, I think when you go to a place like a Heat and you're Jimmy Butler, he doesn't have to adjust because the things that he's had issues with, guys don't play as hard as me, right? That was one of his issues in Minnesota, right? He's like, guys don't know who they are and who they're supposed to be on the team. That was another issue with Tibbs and the Timberwolves. Both of those are always taken care of on a Pat Riley team. Yeah. Guys are playing hard and everyone knows their role. But the one thing about being an alpha and, and the greatest ones that, that I've played with and watched, they raise people's level. You don't just complain about it and they're like, you're right. They're not playing as hard, so we're going to get them out, and we're going to build around you, and we're going to get people in here that do play as hard as you because that's the standard that we want to. But that was never the case in the last few places. They were like, all right, well, we're going to get you out. Well, that was the, not the case. It didn't seem in Minnesota. In Philadelphia, I back up what Dave said. Yes. Joel Embiid sat with me a month ago and said, I wish Jimmy Butler was still on this team. Yeah. I wanted them to re-sign him. He was, we could have been you know, partners for life was the way he spoke of it. So I think he did help his teammates. In we had Philly. that like sort of wired video, right, during one of the playoff games of him trying to back up and hype up Joel. So I think he's done that. I think obviously he's a strong personality, but that strong personality fits in in Miami. And they do want him to be that late game guy. So him wanting to be the guy yeah. isn't a problem there either. Yeah. In, in the end, you got to find the place that fits the peg that you are. Richard is still looking for that place. Maybe it's here, maybe it's not. We'll find out the rest of the show. <laughs> you should stay with us because coming up, the Mavericks pulled off a tough road win in Denver despite their duo not having the best night. So we're going to ask what you learned about the Mavs last night. You can chime in on Twitter or we'll hear what these guys have to say. First, though, here's our distant replay from this date in 2001 featuring our guy, the Jump's own, Tracy McGrady. T-Mac, we got you. Take uh -huh. a look. What are we going to get? Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Happens six nine with bounce. Oh, one of the first oh, former. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Mo Pete. Oh, that was former teammate. Ah. Yep. Oh.